The 360 on Energy and Carbon, hosted by 360 Energy. Welcome back, Dave. I see we're missing your other half today. Yeah, we'll try to make do. I think we've got a good uh, guest here that will help fulfill that void, Sandra. So I'm looking forward to have this session. Yes, and thank you, Allison, for joining us today. Dave, I'm going to allow you to give Allison a bit of an introduction for our listeners. Well, I, I'm really pleased that Allison is coming online. Allison is, has worked for 360 over the last eight months as a co-op student. And interesting enough, background in bioengineering, about to graduate. And we were able to intrigue her to get involved in the energy markets. And she's done like a fantastic job. The things that she's learned, the analytics she's bringing to the table. And and quite frankly, what I love is her youth, her enthusiasm and her interest in the topic. And I think we need more and more people like that in society to make the advancements that we need to make uh, going forward on energy and carbon. So I'm, I'm really pleased to have her online and involved with 360 Energy. Agreed. Welcome, Allison. Thank you so much. So I guess I should start the question, Allison, and, you know, remind you that I'm just the host in the podcast and I'm not your boss. So you get to be able to speak any way you want, remembering I can edit it. But no, just kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> so if you could, I wonder if you could explain to our listeners sort of your background in the energy markets. What have you learned in your exposure in, you know, that eight month time frame? Okay, well, my original background in the energy markets is no background whatsoever, so that's a really fun question to address. But through my time at 360, I mean, we really lived up to the name, and I think I really covered everything. I went through all the commodities, your natural gases and your oils, as well as covering, of course, electricity, a few of those key big grids, carbon, obviously humongous part of energy really has to be considered these days. And then I've also kept an eye on all the new tech coming out, the fun, the geothermals, the hydro storage, all of those cool new uh, techs. So yeah, now I've got like a base, I think, in all of it. It's a big, big area. And, you know, what I was uh, really pleased and, and quite frankly amazed is the speed of how you picked up the knowledge because it's not an easy topic. And so most people will run when they hear the word energy because they think it's too complicated. But, it, you know, you captured uh, that. What actually, what was it, if you could share with our listeners, why did you consider doing this based on your background? What, what was it that attracted you to this particular work? Well, uh, a lot of what they talk about in school, like I'm in school for engineering, just finishing up now, is like protecting the public. That's kind of your like main role. And I even without a base in energy, I could tell that it was fundamental to protecting the public. So it kind of fit that niche for me. I also like problem solving. I like analysis. I like math. Those all seemed like a fun component. There was some really strong ethics to the business model. I really appreciate that in a business. Uh, and I knew there would be tons of room for personal growth. And then of course, along with the ethics, you guys are really on the climate change crisis and uh, doing what you can to stop it. That's always been a personal passion of mine. You know, if I'm working on that in my free time, I'd love to do it for a job too, you know? So now I can't believe that I ever didn't have the base and energy that I do. It's really like a pillar of society. Everything else becomes kind of built off of it. And it really, plays into my everyday life, just understanding how the world works. So yeah, I kind of had an inkling that that could be the case and it really was. It, it is interesting though, isn't it? Because uh, it's something that we all take for granted, but we all use it, we all need it. So uh, once you get exposure to it, it's it's amazing how you think of it differently. So can you share with our listeners, like what were the tools that you used to help navigate in the energy markets? Can you just share with them some of the things that you've picked up and you used to help out in, you know, identifying, analyzing, and figuring out what can be done or considered? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, there was a good amount of training right at the beginning of the role, which was the foundation. And then, you know, very typically, it was the internet. Every question I had, I Googled it. There's lots of research on subjects that I wanted to learn more about. There's a lot of quick hitting videos for the things you just need a taste of in order to understand the other parts. Other than that, I'd recommend specifically the EIA website. You know, that's the Energy Information Administration. 
that's a US government organization. So, you know, if you trust government organizations, it kind of has a solid uh, background. It's very useful. It has a how to on kind of every little topic. And then it has the real data when you want to start getting into it and thinking about a little more hardcore. And then, of course, asking people was key. The other employees at 360 provided the nuance that I just couldn't have picked up from reading. Uh, it's that history. It's the knowledge of what's happened in previous years. It's kind of the glue that holds the puzzle pieces together and really brings everything. And then if I was going to say you really want to learn, present it to someone. When I began presenting the information to the other uh, workers at 360, my understanding rocketed because I wanted to make sure I was actually saying real and correct things. You know, I didn't want to look ridiculous. So if you have to present it to someone, then you're really going to figure it out. Yeah. So that's what I would recommend. I, that's a really I, good point, Allison, it, with the presenting. I can think of so many times where, you know, I when I first started presenting for this certain project, I was so nervous and I'd be preparing. And then now I remember recent milestones. I would just wake up that morning. I would log in like two minutes before I had to and I'd just go in because you just know it. You know what I mean? So uh, that's a really good point. I've actually never thought of it that way. I do want to make like reference what you're saying just for our listeners dealing with factual real facts real information versus relying on social media for your data i think is really important for people to ensure you understand the source and that the real behind it i think that's pretty important on that side allison one of the main reasons why i was very excited to have you on today is because i think you being in the energy markets for eight months is very accurate to let's say business owners listening or executives you know they're not coming from an energy market background and they're trying to understand how they're purchasing energy and you know the types of markets that are out there so that being said what were some challenges you found in understanding energy markets okay there was definitely some hurdles <laughs> to get over one is really the political side uh, that was hugely difficult to understand at first, that you can't just uh, read an article about a new project and it's straightforward. You know, there's there's a tint, there's a lens, you know, from both sides. Uh, that's just the nature of politics. But again, to, to reel that back and peel that back and understand the data behind it, it was really difficult. You really have to look at it yourself and uh, try and read between the politician lines. And there's also a lot of propaganda for different resources. So, you know, you will see just as much propaganda for uh, hydrogen as you will for fossil fuels. And it's different sides, it's different people trying to bring these forward, but you have to go back and read the actual, you know, research, the actual foundation and see you have to discern basically what's what's kind of overblown and what's the facts as someone entering it though probably that's like the second thing you notice you know when you read like the 40th article that's saying like a suspiciously similar thing that's when you start to notice that there's politics in it but before that the entire energy system kind of the connection between the commodities and the electricity and how that impacts business how that impacts economics, how that impacts shipping and, and supply chains and, and understanding how all that connects and how all of these markets kind of influence each other and, and twist each other in different ways. And then wrapping my head around kind of a sense of fragility of the system. It's not fragile. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to come and be a doomsday person on this podcast right now but there it's not as stable as you think and we rely on it so so deeply and we've seen crises recently you know especially again influenced by climate change and these increasing environmental disasters so that was just hard to conceptually admit to myself that you know we're a human society we're doing our best but there's there's a an element of fragility to it and yeah, probably the third component that was really difficult is the, like the ever-changing nature. It really is rapid. 
when I first started at 360, there was about a month where all the oil market could talk about was that Iran was going to come back onto the international market and flood the market with oil and flood the market with natural gas. And there was a month and every time, you know, those political parties, the US and Iran political parties, are, they were supposed to be talking about a nuclear deal. Every time they had a meeting, the price of oil would drop just based on that alone. So, you know, when I came in, I was like, oh, I guess that's a humongous component of of the markets like this this one particular nuclear deal and yeah they didn't sign it nothing happened and no one's talked about it in you know six months so yeah the, the ever-changing sands i feel like wherever you come in in time on the market there's so much history and yet you just have no clue what's going to happen next like what's going to be the big thing right now lng is the big thing and it, it at the even again at the beginning of my term we were just like lng might be a big thing but now we're like oh lng is a big thing so yeah that's really hard to grasp i mean that's why it's people's entire job is because it shifts so quickly there's a reason that 360 energy produces a daily natural gas update is because it changes that fast you know and that's I think difficult to understand when you first step in. You think it's going to be a lot simpler than it actually is. So many great points, Allison. I can think of, I remember when I was first getting into the energy markets, um, my background is actually electrical engineering. You would think that I would kind of have some sort of a clue, but I remember just being so confused by basic units. And it's like, I've learned this in my four years of university, but seeing it in practice just changed it completely. Like understanding what what does one kilowatt of electricity actually, where is that actually used? Quantifying things, quantifying the amount of natural gas and oil and things like that. And also connecting that with where is it actually being used? You kind of already mentioned that, but seeing where commodities, let's say a business owner right now wants to get into energy markets is trying to understand if they break down their business, they would be surprised by, I think, how much electricity they used in certain areas or natural gas in certain areas. And I just think a lot of the times in the beginning, I was sitting in meetings or if you checked my Google history, I would be so embarrassed by it because I was like, what are you even saying? You know what I mean? It's in the beginning, it's like, it's very confusing to navigate and you don't want to admit what's a kilowatt because everyone's going to be like, aren't you supposed to be this or that? Like, shouldn't you know this? But I think the biggest challenge for me with understanding energy markets is it's okay to not know everything and you can ask those questions because everyone started somewhere. Dave, can you give us a bit of, I, I mean, you're an expert in the industry, but what were some challenges you found in understanding energy markets or maybe some challenges you still have with understanding them? So I'll just respond to what your question is, but also elaborate what Allison suggested. You know, the industry's changing all the time. For me, I love change. If I had to do the same thing every day, I, it would drive me bonkers. So I thrive and love that environment. Some people don't like that, right? There's some people that, that they like to have consistency. So, but I do remember when I first came in and for our listeners, I, I was heavily involved in the electrical industry. And then I got involved in the gas industry and I would sit in these meetings, folks would be talking about gas. And like yourself, I, I like if I wasn't nodding off, I'm thinking, what the heck are they even talking about? I don't have a clue. Like they're showing pipelines and all oh, you got transportation, the prices are going, like, I just couldn't. And I have an economics background, so you, it, it should come to me naturally. But I was bewildered and I thought, I got to get out of this. This is crazy. That What the heck are these guys even talking about? But but as Allison suggested and yourself, Lysandra, as you get more involved and you understand the practicality and how it impacts businesses and that actually it is controllable if you know what the heck you're doing i found it really exciting but there is there is that point that allison mentioned and you did too where you go am i in the right place like yeah. I, I this is just they're talking language that i i don't even know what they're talking about and so you have to be patient and you have to be inquisitive and you like the problem solving but that for sure i <laughs> I do remember we'd have dinner meetings with clients. I was brand new to the gas industry and I'm thinking I'm about to, I'm, my head's going to hit the table because I'm just nodding off because I don't know what they're talking about and I'm bored silly. Like I just remember thinking, hold your, head, hold your head up, hold it up, hold it up. So I do, do recall that. And I recognize 
as Allison suggested and Lysandra, you've explained. When, when people are new to it, uh, it can be overwhelming. So it has to be d done in such a way. One, never be afraid, as you said, Lysandra, to ask questions because people are. That's a, that like, so you got to ask questions. Never be afraid. And there's a steep learning curve. It, there is steep. But once you get it, the world makes more sense in some way. It really does. So Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's kind of how I found it too. Allison, Dave, I'm not sure if you agree, but I just always think back to those conversations where I was sat in and had no clue. And you know, when those conversations start making sense, I always wished I could go back to that first and understand what people were saying to me. Because, mm -hmm. you know, once you understand energy, those conversations are really interesting. Like even with, with anybody, I have some conversations at family gatherings and we're talking about people's electricity bills. And I'm like, this is interesting. I'm like, why is your bill so high? Like, what is this kilowatt? And you know what I mean? Like it really comes into play in your everyday life. It does. Now I, I have to ask you guys because my family jokes with me on this all the time is because I'm so passionate and obviously it, it, based on what you guys are saying, you are too. But, but sometimes I find people aren't as interested and excited as I am about topics. So sometimes I'll start talking and they'll go, you, their eyes start fluttering. I'm like, okay, I've lost them. I'm, I gotta, so I don't know if you've found that too, because you're with, when you talk to people that sometimes they don't really get it or not as excited as we are when you respond or ask questions. So. I feel like I'm really, I'm really bad for forcing the information on my friends and family because that's to, now that I know kind of have this better idea. It's less ethereal to me. It's more of a real system. And I'm yeah. like, oh, everyone needs to know because it's a foundation of everyone's life. You know, it, it's a foundation of everyone's career. If you work in anything that uses a computer, you know, <laughs> like uh, now I'm like really forcing the information on everyone, but I feel like the quick hitting points, so I don't lose them as quickly. That's no, good. Maybe they're just not listening I, at all. <laughs> and think about this. I mean, the reason why we're doing this podcast is to engage and make people understand that, you know, there, there's value and benefits to controlling and managing energy slash carbon emissions. So we need more people to get interested and be involved in this whole energy field, to be clear. Steve, I think maybe the people around you have been around you this whole energy career period, so maybe they're a little sick of it. <laughs> yeah, it might be, Lysandra. Yeah, don't speak to my wife about this, okay? <laughs> She's probably an expert on it. Yeah. 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 She needs to teach us. Yeah, um, probably. <laughs> but no, I find I, uh, people around me are interested. It's just more so, it's such a complicated industry that it's hard to have quick conversations like you kind of need to do a deep dive and it's like usually not the time i'm like i could teach you about this right now but we're not in the setting <laughs> that, that's the challenge right because uh you have to you have to appreciate where their foundation is and to answer the question you almost have to give them foundation so they can actually understand what your answer is that's uh, that's the challenge uh, that's actually yeah. so true i spent like a long time writing out like a history of the natural gas markets and like all the influencing factors just to bring it to people and be able to read it out and be like look okay here's all the information and now we can talk about right now yeah. because you do need that context yeah. allison i'll need that for when i go out on saturday night because everyone asks me what i do and i have no clue how to answer <laughs> send them a small book <laughs> they're like please leave they're like that girl needs to go <laughs> <laughs> all right well to end off this episode if you had some advice to those who need information from energy markets what would you recommend okay well definitely follow your interests. There's going to be things you're naturally inclined to want to understand. And the more you understand one thing, it, it kind of ties in and you'll understand things better. And, you know, admit it's not nice to force yourself to learn something you don't want to know. So if there's parts that you're just genuinely not interested in, ask an expert. That's what experts are for. You know, these are people who really have all the knowledge. So, if you need some particular information, but you don't want to become an expert yourself on that particular component, then, you know, no shame in asking someone who has that knowledge. But if you found something that you're particularly interested in, I'd recommend doing the math yourself. Honestly, like Lysandra was saying, units of, of the commodities and of, of, 
even money. That's hard to wrap your brain around sometimes. When I went in and started calculating, you know, the currency conversions and converting from the different units, there's so many units to measure like volumes of natural gas. It's it's wild. So once you start going in and you do the conversion factor and you see, oh, that's how they're adding up this number in this, you know, EIA graph. That's when you're really bringing the understanding onto your plane. Looking at a number is fine, but calculating the number is understanding. So that would be one. And then just a little self plug, read the weekly market update. <laughs> I... <laughs> I made that report and it covers everything. So guys, if you really want some information about the energy markets, I really recommend if you're a client of 360, you get this weekly market update and uh, you might just be an expert by the end of a month if you read it. And this to reinforce what Allison suggested, and this again is because of the work she's done, is she covers everything in energy. It's not just natural gas. We cover electricity, we cover diesel, we cover coal. Like there's there's a variety of topics. Like energy industry is a big industry. So, but as you said at the beginning, Allison, they touch each other. People don't know that. They don't realize that the impact of natural gas impacts electricity. They understand how coal impacts electric. So anyhow, I think uh, your point is a good one. And, and whether it's the publication that, that we develop or others, we encourage people to start looking at that for sure. Allison, I love your point about the experts. I also want to add, I think, you know, if you're a, a manager or a business owner and you're looking to get into the energy markets, look at your business model, see what commodities you use, list where you use them in, look at what units you're purchasing it in, start with the basics and then try to see if you can manage that deeper dive. If not, again, just schedule, I would recommend scheduling a meeting with a, a local expert or of course 360 Energy to help you understand your business. But I do think to, to, to understand how you can get involved in your, in your energy consumption and how you can manage your energy is you need to get to the basics of your business. Dave, yeah, any recommendations? I think those are great points. So in summary, understand your usage. Where is it Where is it being used? What equipment, what processes are doing it? What does it cost? Because again, I would say to you, most customers really don't know how much they spend. Uh, and if they know how much they spend, they really don't know their consumption numbers. So they go hand in hand. I think uh, your, your comments, both of the comments that you've made are really important for people to to have a foundation that to make energy controllable. So I think they're great. Well, thank you, Allison, for coming on today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, look forward to our next session. Yes, so do I. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. That's all for today's episode of the 360 on Energy and Carbon podcast. Thanks for listening. Make sure to check us out on our website at 360energy.net and follow us on LinkedIn at 360 Energy Inc. Tune in to our podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, Anchor, or other listening platforms by searching The 360 on Energy and Carbon. You can watch the video recording and subscribe on YouTube at 360 Energy Inc. Email us your feedback at podcast at 360energy.net or comment on our LinkedIn posts. See you next week.